Hi, and welcome back to the C Sharp beginner tutorial series for the Stride game engine. In this tutorial, we learn about Delta Time. Delta Time is a very important concept within game development. Delta Time is used to calculate frame independent values. So, no matter at what kind of FPS or frames per second your game is running, you will always get the exact same value. And this is very useful. For instance, let's say that for our demo here, we want to rotate this entity around with a certain speed. And as you can see, I've already set up this Delta Time demo script and it has this public float property with a value of 0.6. So, every time our game would update, and let's say that we're running on a very old console and we would have 30 FPS, then 30 times per second this value of 0.6 would be applied to the rotation of our entity. Now that may work for 30 FPS, but if we would be running our game on a high-end PC and we would have a very high FPS, then this value gets applied an awful lot more and the rotation would be insanely fast for this model. In our update method, we are going to rotate our model around. And we can do this by saying entity.transform, accessing the rotation property, and then we have to multiply this with a quaternion, dot rotate y, and then between the parentheses, we add the rotation speed. If quaternion is not available in your script, then be sure to include it by using using stride.core.mathematics. Now let's head back on over to Stride Game Studio, and before we actually run the game, let's add a little script that tells us how much FPS the game is running at. Luckily for us, the Stride Game Engine comes with a ready-made script that displays the FPS on screen. All we have to do is go to the asset view, click on Add Asset, go to the Script tab, scroll down a little bit, and then we have the Game Profiler script. Let's select it, use its default name called Game Profiler. There it is. Let's select our entity or any entity in our tutorial scene and add the Game Profiler to its properties or to its components, I should say. Be sure to enable it, and by default, we're not going to change any of the values, but you can play around with what kind of information you want to display on the screen. But for now, the default values are OK. Now that our game has started, let's select the Delta Time tutorial. And as you will notice, the first thing that pops up is this console window, which displays some of the profiler information. We're not interested in that right now, so let's select the game window itself so that it gains focus. Now you may notice that our entity model is spinning out of control. It's going really fast. And that's kind of logical because if we look at the FPS that our current scene is running at, well, it's extremely high. It's 440-ish FPS. And that means that this value, this rotation speed of 0.6 is being applied well, more than 400 times per second, which is way too high. So we need to get some sort of value to make sure that, that, that this value, this 0.6, is evened out across all frames that we have per second. And that's what delta time is needed for. So back in Visual Studio, we're going to retrieve the delta time. And we're going to store this in a little variable. We can access delta time by using game dot update time dot elapsed and then we have the the total seconds property and if we read its description it says gets the value of the current time span structure and it's expressed in a whole or fractional second and that's exactly what we need you can imagine if we have a very high FPS, then the lower that fractional value gets. And all we have to do now is multiply that rotation speed that we have. We have to multiply that with this delta time variable. You'll notice that we'll get this error right now. And that's because the delta time that we've retrieved is of type double. And our rotation speed was of type float. 
and the rotation y method, well, it accepts a float value. So all we have to do here is convert or cast this double value to a float, and then we're set to go. Our game has started again, and let's again click the Delta Time scene. Select the game, and now, as you can see, we have this entity model rotating at a lovely pace around its y-axis. We have now learned how to apply Delta Time for the rotation of an entity. But Delta Time is used in many situations. So rotation, movement, you will find it in all kinds of animation situations and another very useful situation is the use of timers and we're going to add that to our script so what we're going to do is every couple of seconds we're going to reverse or inverse the rotation direction so let's add a couple of variables on the top so that we can keep track of what kind of time we're currently at let's first make a variable called private float and this is going to be the rotation rotation time and we're going to set that to five seconds so every five seconds we want to inverse the rotation speed we also need to keep track of what the timer is currently at so we're going to make a variable called timer very simple and then somewhere in the update method let's do that after the delta time has been retrieved all we have to do is update that timer variable with the delta time. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So all we need to do here is say if that timer variable, if that exceeds the rotation time, then, then we want to inverse that rotation speed. We can say rotation speed multiply that times minus one. So after the first five seconds, it will multiply it with minus one, which gives us minus 0.6. And five seconds later, it will inverse that process again, which gives us the 0.6 again. We also mustn't forget to set the timer or reset the timer variable back to zero, because if we wouldn't do that, the next frame, this if condition is true again, or still true, and we would inverse the rotation speed once more so every single frame we would be inversing the rotation speed and we don't want that so now that we've done that let's start the game and once it has started select the delta time tutorial click for focus and now every five seconds notice how our entity reverses the rotation speed and that's pretty much it for this tutorial on Delta Time. In the next tutorial, we learn about cloning entities.